When you get a box from China with large or red stickers reading fragile, handle with care, don't fall, not pressure, you know it's going to be good. And inside this box is actually a really cool little new scope. It's actually a pre-production version of that scope. That scope is from Shopstar. It is the Ascar V or Ascar 5. I'm not sure what is the right pronunciation. I like V for victory, but whichever. And this scope is a refracting telescope. It's an APO, apochromatic telescope, which means effectively it has uh, three element lenses inside to avoid chromatic aberration. So it's a high quality telescope that is made for astrophotography. Okay, we've seen millions of those before. What is so special about this one? This one is modular. It comes with two objective lenses and two lens assemblies, one 60 millimeters, one 80 millimeters. And it also comes with a set of three adapters, a focal reducer, a field flattener, and an extender. So you can have three different focal ratios per aperture and three different focal lengths per aperture that you are working with, making it a very, very flexible telescope to really get the field of view that you want for your particular camera sensor. And I think it's going to be particularly, particularly interesting if you own multiple cameras with different field of views. And also when you switch from, uh, let's say large nebulae during the summer and early winter to galaxy season where you want more reach and more focal length. Now, as I was mentioning, this is a pre-production version of the telescope. It was sent to me directly by Shopstar. It is on loan. I do not own it. They did not give it to me, although they did tell me that I could purchase it at the end of my review, should I wish to do so. Anyway, without further ado, let's get this open. Inside the box was another box, and this is a really neat uh, box with the design on the front of it. You have the main telescope with the 80 millimeters uh, lens fitted on. On the side, you have the 60 millimeters lens as well. And then you have the extender, the flattener, and the reducer all designed on there. So you know exactly what you're getting just by looking at the box, which is good. I'll also mention that uh, for actual first light tests under the stars and tests of the optics, as is wont with any scope that you receive, it came with both clouds and very strong winds. So it will have to wait. And today's video will be looking at the scope add the mechanical aspects of it and add the good points and maybe bad points that I see on the scope. Disclaimer, I'm a huge geek. I love optics. I love looking at lenses. Uh, so yeah, I have a, sometimes I have a hard time criticizing stuff because I just, I just love toys like this. I'm so sorry. So let's, let's look inside the case. And there we are. We have the main telescope. The 60 millimeter lens, it seems the 80 millimeters lens is fitted on and then the reducer flattener extender. And there's a little cool thing here. There is a removable foam block for if you have a ZWEF or I assume another focuser as well installed, you can still put it in the case without having to break anything. That's a really nice touch. Uh, we also have a blower. <laughs> Whew, I was a bit hot. Of course, this is for your optics. I've Never seen that delivered with a telescope, but then maybe I missed something. This is super cool. It's a small thing, but I like small things like this. Let me get all of this out and have a look at this gear. Okay, first things first. The fit and finish is beautiful. I actually love this color. This white tones, gray accents color. It actually reminds me a lot of Vixen scopes. And I love Vixen scopes. So it's like uh, hitting me in the heart right here. Thanks, uh, Sharp Star. But besides this, what do I notice immediately? I noticed immediately a thumb screw for the dew shield. So there is what appears to be an extensible, extensible dew shield, at least on the 80 millimeters lens. Uh, there doesn't appear to be one for the 60 millimeters uh, lens. We'll have a look later to see how recessed the lens is compared to actually the front uh, dew, dew cap. Uh, but this is really nice because on the 80 millimeter lens, the, ah, uh, it's, a really nice feeling to pull it in and out. There's definitely a lot of resistance, but it's extremely smooth at the same time. I would assume there is some felt lining inside and there is the thumb screw available here as well to keep the dew shield in place if the actual like felt friction wasn't enough. But from what I can tell, it is enough. I probably would never be using that thumb screw. And this is how the scope looks like with the dew shield fully extended, the uh, thumb screws cr uh, closed. 
Another thing that I immediately noticed, and this is a very welcome thing, is the dovetail bar, Vixen style, is huge. It's very, very long, and it will make balancing the whole equipment, the imaging tra train, really, really easy. I really love to see that because I do remember my Sharpstar 61 EDPH2. The uh, dovetail was very, very short, and you definitely had to replace it. With this, it comes with this humongous dovetail by default, so you will not have to find your own replacement for it. Um, this is very, very good. We also have uh, two places for accessories. There is this overall kind of like finder dovetail bar at the top with two thumb screws that are available and also a finder base here as well that, that is pre-installed with also two thumb screws. So you could have your guider on one and then let's say your ZW A ASI Air or um, your guiding or your control computer mounted on the other. It makes it easy to mount accessories. You could have like a Pegasus power box, for instance, as well, to mount your accessories on the telescope. It's kind of like the norm nowadays, but it's also it's always very nice to see them still on such um, a high spec telescope. Now we also see something very interesting. The focuser has a cap on the fine focus. And there is a thumb screw to adjust the tension of the focuser exactly as I would be expecting. You have the coarse adjustments on, uh, on this side here. So I can just like extract the, uh, the focuser. And we also have the fine adjustments on this side here. So if you're going to, to, uh, put on an electronic focuser, you'll be using the coarse adjustment focuser side to remove the knob here and install the electronic focuser. Uh, as always for Sharpstar Ascar, uh, there the, they seem to be, yes, the screw holes that are required to mount a ZWEF focuser. You won't have to do any changes or use any adapters to put one on. So this is also very nice. And to be honest, it's the first time that I see a cap for the fine focuser, but I guess it makes sense to avoid dust ingress as I assume the mechanics within the dual speed focuser can be quite sensitive. So it's a, a nice touch for durability. Now, besides the focuser, the, uh, the, the standard kind of dual speed focuser tensioning screw, we've seen that quite a lot. I also noticed something really cool. I see two, uh, two graduations on the actual focuser. There is a, a focusing uh, position graduation in millimeters so that even if you don't use an electronic focuser, it, you can just keep a track of the list of the approximate distance that you need to put the focuser at to achieve focus with your equipment so you have rough focus easily within reach. It's really nice to see such a graduation on the uh, focuser itself. Now there is a second graduation on the back of the focuser and it seems to be angles and this is because I noticed another sun screw here. And I assume that, yes, you have a built-in rotator with, with a graduation mark on the rotator that you can map to the uh, actual angle. So if you use specific angles for your field of views, for your framing, you can reproduce them immediately with the manual focuser with the angle available uh, this is really, really nice. I mean, I, I guess it's kind of like standard for high-end uh, refractors, but I never, I've never really owned a high-end refractor, so I'm really hyped to see this kind of feature. At the back of the telescope, we have an actual visual back if you want to use this telescope visually, either with a 2-inch diagonal or with a 1.25-inch diagonal. The 1.25-inch diagonal cap is held in place by a single a thumb screw with a compression ring inside. And the two, the two inch visual back is held on by three thumb screws. And once done, you can very easily remove the visual back. The inside of the telescope from the visual back side is also very interesting. I can see that the paint inside is very, very matte. And the inside of the focuser also apparently has baffles, which is very, very nice when you're imaging from the city like me in Tokyo to kind of uh, diminish the impact of any stray light that could reach the telescope. Okay, let's have a look at the front of the telescope and the actual optics. So the dust cap on the front is threaded, so it's not gonna fall off by mistake. And here it is removed. Oh man. I love looking at lenses, <laughs> guys, help me. I love looking at lenses, it's beautiful. <laughs> 
Now it's interesting. At first glance, the lens appears to not have any inscriptions on the side of it, like you would normally see with the focal ratio, that kind of stuff. Actually, I wonder. Let me ex extend the dew shield. Ah, it is inside the dew shield. Diameter 80 millimeters, f6.25, 500 millimeters focal length, triplet ED super APO. Yes, this is what I like to see. Uh, the dew shield itself is uh, kind of like recessed to the inside. It has like an edge to the inside. And I think that's a great idea because it helps reduce stray light entering the scope. So that's another thing that I really like seeing. Also, the inside of the lens hood is fully lined with felt, as far as I can tell. So this is great for stray light, and this means that it's not just like a felt ring where the uh, dew shield can slide in and out, like in this area, it's across the whole dew shield. Very, very much appreciated. This is a very nice touch, and this should make it a really nice telescope in terms of avoiding stray light in places like Tokyo, where I image from. Okay, let's have a look now at the uh, flattener, reducer, and extender that come with the telescope. So we have three pieces of equipment plus the second objective lens that comes with the equipment. And to put them on, I assume, yes, you just need to unscrew the visual back. So I've unscrewed the visual back, very smooth threads. Me mechanically, everything has been super smooth. And let's say I wanted to put the flattener on, I would just need to remove the uh, threaded dust caps on both sides of the flattener. Man, it really feels high quality. I, I don't think I've ever touched like a telescope that felt this high quality before. <laughs> Even though, like, I believe the price is supposed to be $16.95 US dollars. So not outrageous for an APO, especially if it's multiple APOs in one, uh, with the flattener, reducer, and extender pr provided. Obviously, we'll need to look at the optical results. Uh, but the telescope is supposed to be supporting uh, full-frame sensors. So I'll be testing with APS-C sensor, and I have high hopes that it will work quite well. So anyway, going back to my flattener, that now that I've removed the dew caps, I can just thread it in. And then at the very back, I have the uh, threads that are M48 threads. Uh, and I want the distance between the flange of my flattener or reducer or extender and the camera sensor to be 55 millimeters. So if you're using ZW cameras, you have tons of accessories that come with the cameras to let you reach this 55 millimeters very easily. I'm told that the threads that are on those for the production version will be slightly shorter to make um, threading accessories easier. The inside of the uh, flattener is coated in the same, what appears to be the same matte paint as I saw within the focal tube with the baffles. So here is the 80 millimeter telescope with the flattener, with the dew shield fully extended. This is the full size of it. Um, and it's very easy to just switch from the flattener to the reducer or to the extender. So it's really just with this, it's three telescopes in one. When you add the 60 millimeters lens, it's going to be six telescopes in one plus the visual use of the telescope. Now, the next point that we're all wondering about, including myself, is how do I switch the 80 millimeter objective lens for the 60 millimeters objective lens? And it seems it's going to be easy. I, it seems I can simply unthread <laughs> the 80 millimeters lens. This is pretty weird. And it does seem that's exactly the case. I was just able to unthread the 80 millimeter objective lens and I can now replace it with the 16 millimeters objective lens. So let me remove one of the threaded dust caps and I'm gonna place it on the uh, 80 millimeters lens so I protect it while I'm using the 60 millimeters lens. And here I am threading casually a new lens onto my telescope. And here's how the telescope looks like with the 60 millimeters lens. Let me remove the dew cap. Okay, and now I understand why the 60 millimeters lens doesn't have any dew shield. It's because the lens is very, very recessed within the telescope. And it also has the matte paint and the baffles within the uh, the lens hood here. So this is gonna be really good to avoid stray light hitting 
the uh, the objective lens and making its way in the end to the camera at the back. So with the combination of those two lenses, the 80 millimeters, the 60 millimeters, and the three adapters, the flattener, the extender, and the reducer, you can achieve six different focal lengths, focal ratios, and size of the telescope to carry around. If you're using the 80 millimeters lens together with the reducer, you'll have a focal length of 348 millimeters for a focal ratio of f4.8. If you use it with the flattener, you're going to have a focal length of 495 millimeters with a focal ratio of 6.18 or 6.2. <laughs> and with the extender and the 80 millimeters lens, you get a focal length of 600 millimeters at f7.5. Obviously the focal ratio suffers, but you have much more reach for things like galaxies in a small refractor package, which is very, very much appreciated. And also a lot of galaxies have kind of high contrast against the sky background. So you can kind of get away with slower focal ratios on, uh, on galaxy, during galaxy season to get more resolution on those galaxies. Of course, it's still not as good as like 120 millimeters, uh, kind of refractor, right? With a long focal length and a large aperture. Now, if you're using the 60 millimeters lens that I have installed here with the reducer, you're gonna get a focal length of 270 millimeters for a focal ratio of f4.5. It basically becomes an equivalent to the uh, Sharp Star 61 EDPH2 or the EDPH3. So that would be your typical uh, fast wide field refractor for large nebulae in the summer. If you're using the 60 millimeter lens with the flattener, you're going to get the focal length of 360 millimeters and a focal ratio of f6. And if you're using it with the extender, you'll get a focal length of 446 millimeters and a focal ratio of f7.43. So in the end, you really get six scopes in one with two different form factors and weight and portability and six different focal lengths and focal ratios. Now, is this a gimmick? I don't know. I personally feel like I could do with fewer options, but you know, it, you can't, uh, you can't complain against having like more freedom to choose exactly what you need. So if you're going on a trip, bam, you put the 60 millimeters lens on to make it smaller. You might change the dovetail to something smaller as well while you're at it. And then you can choose whether you want something super wide field or something with a bit more reach or simply bring the adapters with you because they're small and fairly light. If you're at home, well, you stay with the 80 millimeters and you just change the adapter depending on the target that you want to image for the night. It does require more planning ahead of time, like on what am I going to image for the next month or so, for instance, so that you don't need to switch too often. But it is good to have that freedom. Now, one of the things that I was wondering about is how do you make these adapters, the flattener extender and reducer, work for both a 60 millimeters uh, objective lens and an 80 millimeters objective lens while preserving an image circle that has that apparently is full frame and also like keeping the price down to 1695 us dollars for like a, a full frame supported apo well it's actually quite simple there is, there is a marking 80 millimeters right here uh, that is on the tube that goes inside the focuser of the telescope. And you can actually um, unscrew this to, in the end, get, an, get access to another marking that says 60. And this is going to be for the 60 millimeter lens. So you can switch the adapters themselves optically to be fit for the 60 millimeters lens or the 80 millimeter lens. So my first impressions of the telescope mechanically are really good. The focuser is very smooth. The uh, dew shield is also very smooth. There seems to be really good design for tensioning the focuser, attaching an EAF 
uh, attaching accessories to the handle slash dovetail at the po at the top. There's the graduations on the uh, focuser tube, so you know exactly like how many millimeters you are in or out, so you can reproduce that whenever you want. There all is also the rotator that is available with angle gradations, and the in terms of stray light avoidance, it seems to be. Uh, really, really well designed. Everything is smooth, everything is well designed, and switching from one lens to the other was easy and simple, and putting the adapters in place is also easy and simple. Now, what do I miss for now in this telescope? Well, I would have liked to see um, a, a tilt adapter, some screws to adapt the tilt of the camera uh, in the end. So, uh, I will have to rely on on-camera tilt adapter, which I don't have on my Ryzen cam, or put a tilt adapter in the middle. I'll first try without any tilt adapter uh, and see if I can get a good image. Otherwise, I will have to provide my own and see how well it works. Also, this is not a Petzval design, so you will have to take care of your back focus so that it is 55 millimeters. Otherwise, we might see issues with the stars in the corners. Those are my two nitpicks at this time. And of course, there's like the big thing is do people need a telescope with such uh, modular kind of objective lens apertures and modular focal lengths? Uh, modular focal lengths, absolutely. Do they need that many? Do they need that many apertures? I don't know, but I'm a geek and I like it. <laughs> and I think time will tell whether I use those apertures and uh, focal lengths like interchangeably or if I like basically find a sweet spot that works right just for me. But it is really cool to have the option. My next step will be to try the telescope under the stars and I will have my work cut out for me because I need to test this with all of the six methods uh, or modes of the telescope <laughs> in terms of focal length and focal ratio. So make, to make sure you don't miss that, please go down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video, leave a comment as well about what you think of this, about this incredible scope. And you're, if you're feeling very generous, you can even join the channel or join my Patreon. It really helps me keep making those videos and it really makes the channel possible. Thank you so much, everyone. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.